that out of the lakh people, one will listen to it. Out of those ten lakh, one lakh people who listen, that one will be able to understand. And out of that lakh people who understand, one per, you know will be able to realize and live, you know, accordingly. If that is the ratio, then out of the seven hundred crores, this does not come to one, right? So ten to the power five, ten to the power five it goes to ten to the power fifteen. Right? Yes, and you don't have enough number of people to make everyone you know, visible. All the discussions can be all. Can always be good. Yes. Uh, my question is: You said uh, because uh, you mentioned that to be aware. Every moment, so uh, I found that is difficult part. And like uh, <coughs> one of my friends, he attended the person of post, and he shared us that he could improve his awareness. So do you suggest me to improve my awareness to go the person of post? Yeah, the person is one of the uh, you know technique which can help you to get this awareness. It is certainly very difficult. Why? Because we are not used to it. We are habited, you know, habituated to pay attention outside. You see, you are aware every moment, okay? But you are aware of things which you consider important. <coughs> so you think things outside are important. Therefore, you have been paying more attention to the things outside, right? Now, if you understand that you are important, you will start paying attention to yourself. If you think that your desire, thought, and expectations are important, then you will start paying attention to your desire, thought, and expectations. If you think that this desire, thought, and expectation falling in line with natural acceptance is important, then you will start paying attention to natural acceptance. All this will happen as you know you go on see the importance of this. You are seeing importance of the world outside. Therefore, you are paying attention outside. Everybody is paying attention all the time, <coughs> right? But paying attention to what he considers is important. So now, the prashna is a technique which makes you know you see that only the world outside is not important. You are also important. Okay. What you get from the world outside in the form of sensation is also interpreted by you okay, with your own, you know, preconditionings, with your own set of desire, thought, and expectations. Right. So what is matter? You know, what matters to you is not only the world outside, but your own perception of it. Right. And in conjunction of the two, okay, something is resulting in you in terms of happiness or unhappiness. So to be able to see that, you know, it's a good technique. So <coughs> as a technique, yes, you can use that for increasing your, you know, to, to understand the importance of the self, the perception of the self. Right? to understand the interaction between the self and the world outside in the form of sensation. Okay. Sure. All this you can, you know, uh, understand through this. So in that sense, yes. Uh, good morning to everyone. I would like to share uh, some reflections of this morning when I was on the bed. Uh, and then this reflection not only based on today's uh, presentation only, but uh, it's starting from the beginning of the presentation. Now the this 21st century we are going through is like a godly ring which we call that uh, godly ring which means that we are in the luxury. Uh, luxury of the world, godly experience, the materialistic uh, point of view, uh, we can try to anywhere in this world in a minute, 
We can buy our tomatoes from a 7-Eleven shop. We don't have to plant it now anymore. Movies, music, shows, Facebook, all kinds of entertainments are making us forget all other things. And importantly to focus in our self-exploration, focus in self-exploration. We have become so crazy that distraction is like a painless, a painkillers in the present day. And uh, we can't stay without it. It is finding difficult uh, staying without the painkiller or the distraction. If we don't, uh, if we don't have uh, these entertainments, we'll be forced to, to look into this, to into our inner self or our mind. Many high reproaches and tachos, including myself. We, have, we were never ever refused a cup of tea from society. And the 21st century Rinpoches and Dashos, including myself, I don't exclude, children of Lempos, rich, have never experienced of the suffering, while the poor and beggars in Bodh Gaya have no time as buried under the suffering every second. I would not like to claim that Ashjik Nizambo and myself were the belong to the 20th century and we had had the experience of passing. I think we have taken so many things in granted. During our time, we had an abundance of water source, rivers, forest land, and how pure the water and the clean and the environment were. Now we feel the shortage of drinking water, overuse of overuse or exhaustion of all the resources. It's a human nature that we appreciate and feel the gratitude of all the haves when we don't have it. Likewise, when we face the suffering, we appreciate the happiness. And we when we have undergone the suffering, then you understand the importance of what brings the Peace and health. What, uh, uh, what, is the, uh, what is the meaning of the peace and prosperity? I'm not saying that uh, today's youth did not experience the much of suffering that as we did, but I think we have to be real. Like during our time, Rajdeen and myself, and then I think few of us, we had no, uh, our needs were, our uh, wants were very small at that time. I don't have to, anyway, nobody wants pain and suffering and I think every one of us loves and runs after the cause of pain and suffering. Uneducated people are easy to brainwash or bully, but we find educated lot cannot be bullied and brainwashed so easily. Educated lot will be convinced by the truth, the reality, through the right understanding, honesty, and genuine love and compassion. Therefore, education becomes the real priority in this century, so that all of us practice the knowing of truth or reality through right understanding, practice honesty and sincerity. <coughs> Science has now began to research on the mind or consciousness. After a long research on the physical thing, which I feel is a positive sign now, scientists they themselves also experience sadness, happiness, anger, hatred, etc. Which up till now was taken as granted as soul. The self in Hindu, it is called Atma. And Buddhists do not believe in the soul. We say selfless. We believe in the law of causality. Awakened and non-awakened. I think Buddha in Sanskrit means awakened. <coughs> Our tradition believes, other traditions believe in God, our Creator. We believe that happiness and suffering is created by our own human beings. Human body is the basis of human mind. Our action of body and verbal speech is dependent on the mind, action, 
or we call motivation. The learnings from this workshop and through our belief is to take care of our self or motivation. A special emphasis on the self or mind should be preceded by a thorough examination of thorough knowledge and thorough understanding of our consciousness. One of the key messages of this workshop, according to my level of understanding, is in order to reduce the destructive emotions, we need to increase the constructive emotions or positive emotions. This can save a lot of our tranquilizer and sleeping pills or drugs. In order to do so, we need this kind of workshop to be conducted far and wide. It is also wrong for us to leave totally in the hands of our leaders, thinking that we can do nothing, they have the power, it's them to decide. Let's look at this. I think it uh, depends a lot on the individual, all of us. So let us be inspired by this workshop and come up with certain uh, commitments to review the whole education uh, curriculum. Thank you. This is just this morning's reflection. By saying all these things, I do not mean to, mean to prove anything else. Whatever I need to prove, I have proven enough before. I am old already, it's retirement age, so I don't have to impress anyone else. And I'm not trying to uh, argue or uh, prove the intellectuals. I know that intellectuals are the, not the answer, it's the reality. Most of you here must be having you know, this kind of reflection. So tomorrow we'll share this from all of you. It's an important <coughs> fact that uh, session, you know, this self-evaluation session is one of the most important you know, session of this workshop. Okay. So. <coughs> <coughs> so we certainly like to, you know, um, share your self-evaluation, uh, <coughs> and this is true that, you know, we don't have to leave it, you know, everything to the leaders. Uh, in fact, if you look at this whole description <coughs> of harmony in society, right, this business of leaving it to others to manage your affairs okay, is not the right way of doing things. We have to manage ourselves. <coughs> then when we go to a higher, you know, larger scale, then we will have some representative from ourselves. We will manage, but they will be part of us, part of our family and not some outsider. Okay. So, as you evolve from family to group of family to village to group of village and family to the nation and the world, this will be a natural outcome of living in relationship at the level of family and then those who have the capacity you know, to expand further will take up this task of you know, thinking and you know, working for higher levels in the level of group of family, in the level of village, in the level of group of village and so on. It's not as a profession, but as a sense of responsibility. <coughs> but we can see that the major work has to start from the family, then with the group of family, and then with the village. That will provide the foundation of this universal human order. Right. Then the higher orders are built on this, not the other way. What we are doing today is the other way. So we have to start with the individual, then with the family, and then with the village. So when you think in terms of the understanding part, it has to start from the individual. When you think in terms of the relationship part, it has to start from the individual and family. 
and then you think in terms of the universal human order. Right? It has to start from individual, family, and village. So these are the three foundational levels that we have to start working. And if you do that, then we can also work for the higher levels in a meaningful manner. If you don't do this, then we are stuck anyway. The way we are doing. Personal question. We were talking about uh, being aware every moment. Could you give a very specific example of how yourself is aware every moment? See, this awareness, I mean, what we are emphasizing again and again here is that one has to be aware of oneself. Now, if you look at yourself and if I look at myself, then two th kind of things are happening. One is that something is going on in me, right, here. Then something I am interacting with the world outside. Can you specify what is that going on in you at yeah. the moment? Yeah. So, for example, when I am talking to you, <coughs> here, then on the one hand, I am talking to you. On the other hand, I am continuously evaluating right, what I have to talk, right, how I have to talk. So all this I am continuously doing at the level of self. So I have to be aware of this okay. and then I have to be aware of this. Then I have to be aware of this also, you know, something coming from you outside. Now, when I am interacting with this something coming from you from outside, something which is I am you know, transferring to the world outside, but all this is through this. So I have to be aware of this every moment. <coughs> and that is why <coughs> when you are asking any question, right? Yeah. I am aware of what you are saying, <coughs> what sensations are coming from you. Then I am aware of okay, my understanding of the reality. Okay. With these two, I am able to see what you are really, you know, you, what reality you are talking about. Then when you are describing your question, right, from that I am able to see what aspect of reality you already know. Okay. From there I conclude okay, what remaining part of the reality is. Okay. Therefore, what I have to respond in terms of your question. So, I am aware of myself in terms of my understanding, in terms of my evaluation that, is, that I am doing or your question, right, or the points you are making, in terms of what reality you are talking about and what part of the reality you already you know, are aware of. It. So when you ask the question, I am able to conclude from this awareness about myself and about you and your question is that what part of the reality you are not aware of. Therefore, I decide in myself that I have to describe about that part of the reality which you are not aware of. So, I would do, do two things. One is draw your attention towards that reality. First, then describe about those parts, you know, details of the reality which you are not aware. So, that is what I am doing. So, I am paying attention to what you are saying. I am paying attention to myself in terms of my understanding, in terms of my you know, evaluation of what you are saying. Then in terms of my decision as to what has to be conveyed to you. So all that I have to be aware of every moment. So that is how I am interacting with you. 
and if there is any uh, mistake in terms of the evaluation <coughs> of what you are uh, saying, then I will not be, you know, uh, appropriately respond to your question or make you understand. So that evaluation I keep doing. So if I am responding to you and I see that it is not you know, making sense to you, then I do this re-evaluation. So that I have to be continuously aware, aware of the input from you in the form of sensation, aware of my own understanding, aware of the evaluation which is going on in me, you know, in response to this sensation. Then my decision okay, to respond to you, which will express itself in terms of behavior. <coughs> then the behavior, then your response, okay. then the you know the sensation back to me, and then the reevaluation of it. All that I have to be aware. Can can we also? <laughs> I've got two now. Uh, thank you. Uh, I just want to share whether that example is too trivial or not sure uh, to be to be aware of myself and what I'm doing. Uh, okay, when I was having breakfast this morning, uh, there was this uh, rice and uh, uh, curry curry made of uh, ferns and into some other uh, vegetables. So uh, when I was having that one on, on the table, I was uh, trying to make myself aware where this rice came from. Maybe somebody uh, went to the forest to pick up these ferns. Maybe that person might have uh, you know, taken the trouble. And who might have cooked these? So, then I think when I am being aware of myself, even at the dining table with these thoughts, and I think uh, I begin to feel myself responsible for you know, how I do it, and, uh, and also to, to pay some gratitude to whoever is involved in, in uh, cooking and you know, making this breakfast ready. Is this example very trivial, or is it part of how you being aware? Yeah. So it is an Indeed. example of Excuse me, Bharti. my I do being aware. Have kind of a similar question, so maybe you can answer to the same. You know, to the same. Like uh, yesterday afternoon, you have given this exercise of, I mean, the three exercises. I can be aware of your uh, desire, thoughts, expectations, and third, evaluate. Uh, after that, I, I I'm trying to be an aware. Uh, maybe, uh, because this is an exercise doing first time, so please correct me again if I'm doing right, wrong. <laughs> uh, actually, after that, what has happened? <coughs> like, uh, I'm thinking every time, the desires are there, expectations are there, thoughts are there, they are coming. Uh, but, you know, I'm feeling, I'm, I don't know, but I'm feeling that there are two things are living within me. The one with thought, expectation, desires, I can see that happening here, exactly in this part of the body. And when the thoughts are coming here, and I'm trying to aware of those thoughts, <coughs> I feel something is here about that head. It's, it's looking at the thoughts happening. And if the thought is, it's a right thought, then, you know, I, I get it happen. If it is wrong, immediately, you know, I'm, I'm saying that, no, that's not a good thought. You know, stop it. Stop doing it. This is the one, one thing I, I realize. It's happening. I can see that the thoughts are happening in mind. Uh, throughout the workshop till yesterday, the percentage of took off was much higher. But today, I'm witnessing the... Uh, I'm taking off. But the percentage has gone down. You know, the moment I'm taking off, uh, I'm making myself, don't go away. Be here. So, uh, is this an awareness? 
Uh, third thing is, that was, uh, I don't know, but uh, clearly I realized that I'm putting off my pants and shirts. <laughs> you know, otherwise every day, every day was happening so mechanically. I did not even realize that I'm putting off my pants, shirt, you know, uh, the buttons and the belt, every small thing. When I'm, I'm walking, whether I'm really walking. But uh, today, I don't know whether it's because of awareness or maybe again my preconditioning, my assumption. But today I feel that yeah, I walked all the way from my quarter to this place. I'm feeling that I'm sitting here. So this sense of feelingness of sitting or you know listening to you, talking to you, looking at the people, uh, rarely I had this before. It wasn't that I was not looking at the people. It wasn't that I was not getting up, getting up the pan. Uh, these are the regular activity. I was doing it, but. Uh, like I'm, I'm trying, I'm feeling actually those activities. You know, the other thing is that uh, when I went to take a bath this morning, I really had a, uh, a feeling of water falling on my body. <laughs> so I don't know whether it's an awareness or what. But it, I mean, is this the way? Is this an exercise we, we do? Do I need to follow? Yeah, there are two parts of it. One is being aware of the things outside. And body is also a thing outside you. So, one thing is being aware of your body and your things outside. The other is being aware of what is going on in the self. So, what uh, we said uh, <coughs> yesterday had to do with this you know, second part. But ultimately, we have to be aware aware of the whole existence. So this second part also is important. That I have to be aware of the world outside. But recently, you know, yesterday particularly when we talked about it, we were focusing on the awareness about the self as to what is happening in terms of my desire, thought, expectation, what is happening in terms of my, my realization and standing. That I have to be aware of. Now if you do this, then you will realize that even when you are looking at things outside, right, something is happening in you also. So I have to be aware of this outside and then I have to be aware of what is happening in me in response to that. So for example, when you are listening to me, You were not aware even of the fact that you are listening to me. Now you have become aware of the fact that you are listening to me. <coughs> so this is one part. But then you have to become aware of what is going on in you when you are listening. Right. So when I said some word and you listen to it, right, then what happened in you? That awareness is also required. So presently, you know, at least yesterday when I mentioned about that, it had to do mainly with this second you know, thing, that is, what is happening in the self, what is happening in me in terms of desire, thought, expectation. And then whether these desire, thought and expectations are in accordance with my natural acceptance or accordance with the realization and understanding. That's what I you know, mentioned yesterday. But of course, ultimately, you know, you see, I have to be aware of myself and I have to be aware of my interaction with the world also, including the body. So that ultimately I have to do because after all I am in coexistence. Right? So I have to be aware of everything, you know. I have to have the knowledge of it, the awareness of it. So both of them would come, you know, the awareness of yourself and awareness of your interaction. Outside. So that ultimately there we want to reach, but yesterday we were focusing on this particular aspect. So the example which uh, Sangeji has taken, uh, the, uh, it is focused on the things outside. You, know, right? you are eating the rice and you are trying to be aware of this rice. Aware of how it will grow, you know, who give the rice, who you know, cook the rice, all this is one outside. 
If you become aware of your self, you will see that you are thinking of these things. You are thinking about, you know, where the rice has come from, right? who has cooked the rice. Right? This thinking also you have to start focusing. That is taking place in you. Okay. Because